Yeah. Oh, it's like when it disconnected. <laughs> celebration for the first Sunday of Lent. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert and was with him, strengthening him as he resisted temptation. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us this Lent in our struggles to resist temptation, turn from sin, and renew our yes to Jesus. Please stand to begin our praise and worship of God. Jesus. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. God. Be mindful of 
your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Your paths, Lord, are love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. Why wasn't there a flood? At the time, 
They were idolizing false gods. They built idols. They were having a good time, but not following God's word or God's message. So God, what he did was he cleansed the earth of all the people. He saved Noah because why? He had faith in God. And in the second reading it says that he saved eight people, Noah's family, and all the animals and the domestic animals. So basically God was pressing the reset button on the world because he had created people. They didn't follow him. We had to restart. And his covenant was we will not send another flood. I will not send another flood to destroy everybody. Because if everybody follows Noah's faith at the time, you will be saved. Then we look at the second reading on how Peter remembers the flood story from Noah. So there's that link from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And how Jesus was baptized. But Jesus is God. He came to earth. He was born as humankind. Why did he need baptism? Why did God need to have baptism? He, Jesus, is the ultimate guide to how we ought to live. Jesus, everything he did on earth, is a picture of what we ought to do. Jesus was baptized. We are called to be baptized and to baptize others. But before I keep going, if you could recall your baptism, which many people can't because they were baptized as an infant, but I know you've all witnessed baptisms happening here. What is the first thing, what is the first objective for the parents that are usually sitting here? What is the objective? I know the priest usually says, do you renounce sin as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? And do you renounce Satan? That is our calling. That is what's happening. When we have our baptism, we are called to renounce Satan. We are called to eliminate the lure of temptation. In the gospel, Jesus Christ, after receiving his baptism, is driven out to the wilderness. Driven. That's stuck in my mind. So God had the Spirit drive him into the wilderness. Why? What is the example for us to be driven into the wilderness? I think it's to be silent. Quiet with the Lord, with God, trusting in God that He will be with you in your desert. Today is almost like a desert. We see this parish is empty. We're at home and we're celebrating Mass on TV or on the internet and it's empty. We have nobody to share our love of Christ with. But that is where God is calling us the most. In our own deserts. Jesus was tempted. Or was he tested? Something we have to think about. There's a positive and a negative. Being tempted is being pushed towards something that's not moral, that's sinful. And Satan is so good at that. And he does it every single moment of the day. When you're sitting in the pew or you're sitting at home in prayer in silence, alone with God, how often does a distant distraction enter your brain and now you're thrown completely off? What is that? That's Satan. Satan goes after the holy ones. The ones who are driven to get closer to Christ. This Lent, more than any other, 
Last year's Lent, we were just starting this pandemic. This year, we are a full-fledged pandemic. We understand what is happening. Maybe we haven't visited the people we had. Maybe we didn't call relatives like we should have. Maybe we had a judgment on people. Maybe we had opinions of people. Maybe we sinned this year a little more than we usually would. But this Lent, Jesus is calling us, the Holy Spirit is calling us, and God is calling us to write down our sins, to make known what Satan is doing to our lives, what the evil spirit is pushing us to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it is present. The evil is here. How will we arm ourselves? How are we going to arm ourselves to beat this? To beat Satan? Remember, Satan was a fallen angel. He knows the Bible, he knows God, and he knows everything that Jesus does on earth better than we do. It's scary. But it's not impossible. How many saints does the Catholic Church have? How many priests do we have around the world? How many bishops? How many cardinals? We have a pope. These are all people who have lived in this faith and this love and this glorious, this glorious moment where they are sacrificing their lives for Jesus. We are called to do the same through our baptism. What does baptism do? It washes away original sin. God gave us that gift of washing it away. It's up to us to keep it clean. How many times have I heard a teacher tell me, Corey, you're going to start with an A. It's up to you to keep it. Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit gave us an A. Are we going to keep that A? And what is the A in the end? It's our salvation to the next world, to the better world. This is preparation for us for the next world. What you do here will be how great the glory in heaven. So this Lent, take time in silence with Jesus. And if you get distracted, Look at something. Jesus' face, face, the cross, the crucifix with Jesus on the cross. Look at a picture of his mother. Look at St. Joseph. Look at a saint. Use something to focus your energy into so that any of the distractions is going to be bouncing off of your force field. We see this. The greatest example of our faith is God's word which he spoke to Noah Jesus' baptism and the written word of the Bible so we have God's physical voice we have the written word in the Bible and we have the prime example on earth as Jesus Christ to follow, to show as an example to us on how we ought to live. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving is what they say we must do during Lent. So pray your hardest this year. Give all you can to the people who need it. It doesn't have to be money. It could be time. It could be Jesus. And fast. Fasting is the way we can show God that we are actually in tune with the word, what he's saying, and how we ought to live. So this Lent, repent. Repent. Go to confession. Receive Holy Communion in a state of grace by Easter. Believe, 
believe in the good news. Believe in the gospel. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let me take time to remember that God has reached out to us in the last healing covenant. He sent his son to become one with us and our human suffering. Let us turn to him now with our knees and as eager to be transformed. The response to each intention is, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, called to find in her Redeemer the source of salvation for herself, and for all who came to her, we pray to the Lord. In your mercy, mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and the healing of divisions within the human family, we pray to the Lord. In your mercy, mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, for those recovering from natural disasters, and for grace for those who do not yet know the covenant that God offers to humanity to welcome Christ as the light of their life. We pray to the Lord. In your mercy, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For grace in our community at the beginning of Lent to live a time of transformation and of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. In your mercy, mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic and and a successful vaccination program for the health and safety of everyone during this time. For the sick among us, Anna Esposito, Isaac, Ilana and Liam Pizetun, Brendan Glenade, Michelle Cake, for all who have died, for our beloved dead, Robert Morgan, Domingos Oliveira, we pray to the Lord. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Today, our celebration is in memory of deceased parishioners. We pray to the Lord. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also pray for our personal intentions. God of patience, we are humbled by the unconditional love you have bestowed on us beyond our memory. See your misery and hear our praise through Christ our Lord. Amen.
you accept the word of God, you are my dear Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for with them. We celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeling of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, and with one voice of praise we acclaim.
in a similar way, when suffer was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Gracious we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, our apostles, peace, I leave you my peace with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant that peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's go,
remember the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Glory of Christ. Amen. spiritual communion. I, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never, never permit me to from you. Amen. Amen. A prayer for Lent. Dear God, you probably look down and think, what has happened to this beautiful world that I created? Lord, please stop the hate, the indifference, the senseless acts, the separation. I pray for healing and peace to cover our land be given to every person who walks this earth. Please hear our cry and answer our prayers. Amen. Amen.
faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity is strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceed from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Following the positive reception of our Be My Online Valentine event, we're having an online celebration for St. Patrick and St. Joseph, taking place Saturday, March the 20th, featuring dinner, music, and fun for all. The menu consists of salad, shepherd's pie, and bread pudding at $25 per meal. And as last time, pickup or delivery are available. And again as last time, you can order a bottle of wine, red or white, to go with your dinner for an additional $15 per bottle. Please call or email Don. The contact information is in the parish bulletin, and the extension is 223. Join Father Jerry or Father George for an hour of faith sharing each Monday during Lent following the 8.30 a.m. Mass. Please note that it's limited to only 10 people, and it will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel. So if you object to being seen on YouTube, please don't attend. It will then obviously be available for those of you who cannot attend to enjoy virtually on our YouTube channel, and the link is on our homepage. There is a link on our homepage to an online Way of the Cross. For those of you who wish to continue celebrating this during this Lenten season on Fridays, unfortunately, social distancing makes it impossible to hold a live one here in the church. And finally, due to the COVID restrictions, Hope continues to ask for nothing, and we'd like to thank you for your cooperation. The food bank is, however, open to serve the LaSalle community in need. And the contact information is in our bulletin. Thank you, and God bless. May God be for blessing, O Lord, we pray. Come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, but should be strengthened in temptation. And eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As it's ended, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a nice and beautiful Sunday.